what is your best way to enjoy yam mine is just to boil the yam and eat it with red palm oil but when i want to add veggies to it i go all out with opaka and okra that's the yam special we will prepare today yam and vegetable jaguaragua what do you call it in your Igbo dialect let me know in the comments i'll be using frozen yam for this yes guys i am still enjoying my frozen nigerian ingredients in obodo Ibo. first we set some water to boil while waiting for that let's talk about the ingredients i have the frozen yam frozen okra seasoning cubes habanero pepper onions opaka green leafy vegetables salt and red palm oil with emphasis on red for the vegetable you can use ogo green amaranth spinach etc when the water boils add the frozen yam cubes no need to defrost them first but there's need to add them to boiling water then chop the green leafy vegetables and onions Put them in a pot, the chopped onions, opaka, seasoning cubes. Habanero pepper and some of the chopped green leafy vegetables. I'm using spinach which contains lots of water so I add about a third of the vegetables at this time. You'll see what I'll do with the rest later. Keep an eye on the yamo because it boils over easily. Keep checking it and once you can easily drive a knife into the yam, it's done. Decant the water into a bowl. In a pan, I blanch the rest of the spinach. If using a vegetable like ogo or green amaranth, no need to do this step. Just put everything in the pot like I did earlier and steam. Once it wilts, remove the water and add the veggies into another pot, which by now should be on the stove. Can you peep the okra? Can you? Can you? Yes, add it at this time too. Add a few tablespoons of the yam water into this pot of vegetables. Keep stirring the contents of the pot. And once well heated up, pour into the pot of boiled yam. Add the palm oil and mix very well. Yeah, that's where it got its Igbo name from because Igbo Ihawo means to mix something very well. If you know how abacha is prepared, you add all the ingredients then mix up with a spatula. That's known as Igwa Abacha. Kamja Gwa Abacha. <laughs> Add salt if necessary. Look at that. Yummy. Some time ago, I prepared another recipe very similar to this one and that recipe got a few people confused. So here are the differences between what I prepared in this video, yam and vegetable, that's jaguaragua, and the other recipe, yam porridge, that's jipotopoto. <laughs> 
I totally made that up. Who knows the Igbo name for yam porridge? Please let me know in the comments. First difference is in the ingredients used to prepare these two meals. Yam and vegetable has less ingredients than yam porridge. While you can go all out with the ingredients you add to yam porridge, you dare not bring some of those ingredients close to yam and vegetable. For instance, no crayfish in yam and veg, no mackerel usually. <laughs> The jury is still out on the mackerel. You can add dry fish to yam porridge, but no dry fish in yam and vegetable. Also, while you can prepare yam porridge with zero vegetables, yes, you can prepare yam porridge with from zero vegetables all the way to lots of vegetables. But for yam and vegetable, green leafy vegetable is a must and lots of it. Originally, green amaranth was the most popular vegetable for preparing yam and vegetable. Yes, I remember this vividly. When we were very young, green amaranth all the way. But then came a time when people's eyes opened to the nutrients on Ogo. That's Nigerian pumpkin leaves. So it became the popular vegetable to prepare this with. When fluted pumpkin leaves are in season, you can also use it to prepare this. I don't really like the taste of fluted pumpkin leaves. Outside Nigeria, you can use spinach, which is what I used today. I have seen people add scent leaves to both recipes. A little bit of scent leaves takes the taste to another level. Then the controversial ingredient. While okra is a standard ingredient in yam and vegetable, it usually shocks some people when I add okra to yam porridge. <laughs> but cooking is science and in this case, I'll use mathematics to illustrate. Remember, I said that you can cook yam porridge with from zero leafy vegetables to lots of vegetables. While when the vegetable is zero, that's x equals zero, it does not make sense to add okra. But as the quantity of the leafy vegetable slowly increases, as x tends to infinity, at some point along that number line, you will agree with me that it will make sense to add okra, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? Have you liked this video yet? Have you? Please like oh, for the mathematics. <laughs> The second difference is in the preparation. In yam porridge, you should worry about the quantity of water you add to the yam at the beginning because at no point during the preparation will the water be poured out. In Jaguaragua, no need to worry about the quantity of water because it is usually poured out with the key word here being usually. The water is usually poured out when the yam is done. But I don't mean fill the pot with water, no. <laughs> I mean, for Jaguara, you don't really need the same level of water like you do when preparing yam porridge. There's a way I prepare Jaguara though, such that by the time the yam is done, you have little to no water in the pot. Hence, you would not need to pour out any water. But that one will require further maths to explain. So let's leave that method for another day, shall we? The third difference is that the palm oil in yam porridge should be cooked till it integrates well into the meal. My recommendation is always at least 7 minutes. That's the length of cooking time required for palm oil to integrate well with whatever you're cooking. That's why palm oil is added quite early when cooking yam porridge. But in yam and vegetable, the raw taste of palm oil should come through while one is eating the yam. This raw taste works well with jaguar agua. This is why you may get away with using anyhow palm oil to prepare yam porridge, but with jaguar agua, you need to make sure that you're using premium palm oil, like my mother-in-law's palm oil. Chayu! The fourth difference I'll talk about today is that when yam porridge is done, you will see a thick liquid in the pot, but with yam and vegetable, no porridge in the pot. At most, it should be moist. A good number of people prefer it quite dry. With that, click the boxes on the left and right to watch more traditional recipes. Bye-bye. See you soon.